That's Casting Crowns on NBL and Silent Night. Of course, whenever I hear Silent Night, I think about Jesus in the manger, that little baby. And today when we talk here with um, Stephanie and John Pastillo, we're going to get a chance to hear about a little baby because they just had one. So anyway, let me welcome the new parents, mom and dad, husband and wife to the conversation. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with me. How are you? Blessed. How are you? Good. I'm very blessed. Mama, you're glowing over there. Oh. (laughs) You just... You just had a little baby. I don't know if it's the baby or the Holy Spirit, but... It's probably both, <laughs> right? <laughs> God be the glory. Yeah. So I mean, we're going to hear the incredible story of how God uh, delivered you guys from addiction, brought you to faith in Christ. I mean, there's a, it brought you to each other. You got married. Uh, now you're parents. But we got to mention Taddy because he's sitting at Children's Hospital. He's in, a, in the ICU, right? The NICU? NICU, yeah at Children's Hospital, what, two blocks from here right now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right, tell us about Teddy. Like, um, apparently he showed up a little early. <laughs> you were due when, in January or something? Yeah, January uh, 3rd. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was 2 in the morning, and I, I felt something, which was my water break. But, um, you know, I was really tired. And uh, John had uh, an exam for work, um, so... I didn't want to wake him up for a few hours, so I was just, you know, um, praying in the living room, petting my cat, going on my exercise ball, you know, and then I, I, I mean, I knew I, I could, was having issues um, breathing through these things, so um, I finally woke him up, and I said, John, you got to pray for me, because, you know, something's happening, and I was led to call um, someone who was helping us with, like, who was going to help us with birthing classes, which we didn't really get around to. So, (laughs) yeah. So, I mean, we were completely, like, had no idea about anything, and uh, we didn't think it was labor. So, but the lady on the phone said, you know, pack a labor bag. And I'm like, what does that entail? You know, we didn't look into that yet. We still had nine more weeks to look into that. We haven't crossed that bridge yet. Right. So, um she said to call my uh, on-call OB, and they sent me to Children's because they said, if I'm in labor, just you should go there anyways, you know, in case you are. And right. Ended up sitting in the emergency room or, you know, labor and delivery for like an hour or longer. Um, and I don't think they knew that I was in as much pain as I was. I was just enduring, you know, internally because right. um, I'm not trying to hoop and holler and call it, cause a scene. And then... Um, they called me back, and then when I gave my symptoms to the nurse, she called in someone immediately to check me, and then it was just crazy because John had to leave for that work exam. If he, if I wasn't in labor, I was like, I want you to go, you know, whatever else is happening, sure, whatever. Um, so he had like a half an hour to get to this place, and it was like 35 minutes to the to the test. And the doctor finally came in, and she's like, well, there's three tests to tell if your water is actually broken. And then she checked me, and she said you positive for the first two so that gave john just enough time to call the people and say you know hey can we reschedule because it's a pretty expensive exam sure it was just like everything was pressed to like the final like you know how god likes to do things you're just hanging on and you're like come (laughs) on god like give me a break here but um yeah it was just the whole day was just like uh it was like a surreal movie because it was just like how can this be happening so soon and it's just like well it is so So like how early did he show up the, um, nine weeks. Nine weeks early? Yeah. So, all right, and what's his name? Thaddeus. Thaddeus James. Thaddeus James. How'd you pick that? Uh, well, Thaddeus means a courageous heart, and it's the the other name for Jude, the book of Jude. Mm-hmm. And Jesus' half-brother. And then uh, pretty much God gave us that name. You know, God gave us Thaddeus, and then he also gave us the name James long before that. Do <laughs> you have a nickname for him? Teddy. Teddy. That, that's it? Okay. Teddy. He may be TJ when he gets older, but you can't call a baby TJ. It's kind of weird. No. <laughs> no, he's definitely a Teddy. But So he, he's never been out of the hospital yet. No. He's got a lot of hair on his head, and uh, he kind of looks like a teddy bear, so it works. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm a little jealous that he has hair on his head, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. So wait, what kind of an exam? You're, you're an HVAC specialist, right? It was uh, in HVAC? Yeah, you? it was the... Uh, the 608 test for uh, uh, refrigerant I was going to take. They take they have a class over at Earth Supply I was going to take. and uh, So you were like, hey, I can't come because we're having a baby right now? Yeah, I called the instructor, and he didn't answer. So I, he called me back, and I said, hey, my, my wife's going into labor. He's like, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it later. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Praise God. 
That's uh, I mean, cause that's either like the best excuse or like the <laughs> the biggest lie ever, right? It's it's either true or it isn't. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Well, congratulations, mom and dad. Because like glory. when I first met you guys, it was the um, <clears throat> it was supposed to be the Zach Williams concert, um, but it ended up being the We Are Messengers concert because Zach Williams came down with COVID. But this was uh, when was that? September. I think it was September. Uh, something like that. Yeah, it was obviously warmer out. It was earlier this year, and uh, it was over at the Chapel at Cross Point. It was a Kingdom Bound concert, and we're having a conversation st- with your mom and dad, Stephanie. I, I know them. I've known them for a long time. I played Little League Baseball with your dad, went to high school with your mom, and you walk up and begin to talk about your story, and it was just absolutely incredible. I hadn't realized what you'd been through. And, of course, then I got a chance to hear about John and a little bit about, you know, the two of you and how you met and stuff. And I said, this is a a spotlight conversation if I ever saw one. Because on Wednesdays, we want to put the spotlight on what Jesus has been doing in and through his church. And we're the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, How he brings people to faith in Christ. How he delivers them, heals them, helps them, encourages them. And and the, the point of that is that all of us need that stuff. All of us are in the middle of something. Uh, right now, you're you're going through the joy of being parents, but the trial of having your baby in the NICU at, at Children's Hospital. Praise God for a little Teddy. Um, but uh, but God's been faithful in your lives. And I, when I heard your story, I just said, people need to understand just how powerful God is. And so I wanted to invite you in. And again, I'm glad that you both could be here. Thank you so, for having us. So take us back here. You guys met at an organization called Total Freedom, right? A ministry called Total Freedom. Mm-hmm. John, give me, give me your best explanation of what Total Freedom really is. If somebody says, oh, you're a part of Total Freedom, what is that? Uh, Total Freedom is a faith-based ministry where we take people from out uh, of active, active addictions and we teach them a new lifestyle. Mm-hmm. We teach them that they don't have to live like that anymore, that they can be free in Christ, that there is freedom in Christ, and that there is freedom from addiction, and you don't have to live in that addiction the rest of your life. There, there's, <laughs> there's a way to get set free. Amen. And uh, I didn't know it existed, you know, me personally. We won't go into the details, but I just want to know, when you first came, you were a believer? I was partially a believer, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I was a believer of Christ. Okay. You know. You've obviously come to know Jesus differently <laughs> since being a total fan. Very much. Um, Stephanie, I know that your parents love Jesus, so you grew up around the church, I would think, right? Yeah, we actually, we both uh, grew up in the church, um, you know, a spirit-filled church, um, but uh, of God. I never had, mm-hmm. yeah, they were both not of God, actually, but I never had a personal, uh, you know, I believed in God, I believed in angels, I believed in demons, I believed in the devil, but uh, I didn't, I, you know, I went to youth group and stuff, and I never understood, uh, you know, I never understood why people, like, lo- ha- loved to worship and loved God, like, I didn't have a personal anything like I had no personal experiences with Jesus I just knew like John three sixteen, and I believed in God and I knew I, I mean I knew he was the truth but I didn't really know much beyond that you know All right I don't want to be overly dramatic or anything like that but I'm just going to ask this question if you hadn't connected with Jesus and God obviously used total freedom to help you in this but if you hadn't connected with Jesus Based on where you were at in your journey, do either one of you feel like you'd actually be here today, right now? I'd be dead. You a believe million that? times 100%? over. I mean, yeah, I, I did pretty much die multiple times, so okay. um, we're gonna there hear was that. no way I would have lasted. Um, and, you know, my health was really diminishing. I was my, my liver was failing. My kidneys dropped down to 10% function at one point. I was dying one way or another and oh all the things that i've been healed from and restored i mean and he continues to restore like i shouldn't have been able to be pregnant i was essentially barren so the fact that i even was pregnant a that was another surprise i mean the fact that daddy came early was another surprise but god just keeps sure. surprising us because that's he's the god of miracles he's the god of surprises he's the god of healing restoration you know mm-hmm. freedom Total freedom. Total freedom. <laughs> what about you, John? I, don't, I mean, obviously we're not trying to be dramatic, but how far were you into the addiction thing? I, I was struggling from addiction from a young age. When I was uh, a wrestler in high school, well, actually a wrestler in middle school, I cracked a vertebrae in my spine, and the doctors prescribed me opiates. Mm. And I always struggled, you know, with addiction here and there, you know, and it just continued to get worse. But I was so far deep. I mean, I was 
doing heroin and coke and crack and all that stuff. And it was it was like every morning I woke up, I had to get high. And really? nothing was going to stop me because that's what I had to do. Oh, I wow. had to get high. And the, this started in middle school, really? I mean, yep. oh, my goodness. All right. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment with more of NBL here on WDCX. Um, we got John and Stephanie Pastillo. Am I saying your last name right? <clears throat> okay, they're in studio with us here talking about God's grace, his mercy, and what God's done to minister to each of them and bring them to f- either faith or greater faith in Christ. But both of them have been set free in Jesus' name, and we're going to hear that story as we continue. But we've got to take a break. We'll be back with more of this Worship Wednesday edition of NBL right after this from Toronto's premier mortgage broker, Rodney Shunker. Well, let's get back to it. We got John and Stephanie Pastillo in studio with us. They met at a ministry called Total Freedom, which is actually, I believe, in Alden, New York, or the Alden, New York area. And um, it's got several offshoots to the ministry. We can talk more about it, but one of them is an apparel printing service, custom apparel printing service called Freedom Expressions. And Stephanie, you actually work there, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's a place for you to grow and heal, but also be employed, and at the same time, be a part of a business opportunity and I mean we can get into those details but that's where you're at and then you're in HVAC John yes sir working around what Genesee County or something Genesee County okay and how long have you been doing that um about two years okay all right you're a good guy to know Andre I'm Andre a- heating and cooling yeah all right well a little <laughs> shout out for cooling. Andre heating and that's cooling right. okay I'm gonna keep your phone number handy <laughs> <laughs> um, never know when you're gonna need to call that guy anybody got a guy yeah. So, um, well, let's talk about your story here, because it's amazing, actually, what God has done in each of your lives. And both of you said that you were addicted, like, beyond the point of being able to do anything about it yourself. Um, I don't know where to begin here, because which one of you first turned to God for help and or total freedom for help? And and I there was probably right. several times, that I, I'm going to guess that there was several times you tried to address this in your life, but it wasn't going anywhere, yeah. right? Okay, so give us that part of the story. Help us understand a little bit about the journey and then ultimately what brought you to total freedom. I think you should go first. All right. Um, well, I mean, I, like, like Stephanie said and I said, we grew up in the church, you know. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the church, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal church. But like she said, I had no relationship with Jesus, you know. I had no real understanding what Jesus did or who he even was. I just knew he was God. And that was about it. That was the gist of it. But I ended up with a full-blown addiction by the age of 18, and I needed help. And I was in trouble with the law, and I was in trouble with my parents, and uh, trouble with school. And I ended up getting kicked out of school, ended up in drugs hardcore, you know. And uh, hardcore meaning like cocaine, heroin, crack, that stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff that's not like, you know, just a little weed here and there, you know, because it just escalated from over the years. And then I ended up going to a rehab out in Los Angeles. And uh, before, prior to that, I, I cried out to God when I was dying. I was overdosing, and I said, you know, I'll serve you the rest of my life if you save my life. Hmm. And uh, What prompted that? I mean, obviously you were struggling, but w- like what brought you to that moment to finally cry out to the God you said you didn't even know? I said, God, if you're real, this is the exact words I said, God, if you're real, save me, and I'll serve you. And he did, but that didn't change anything, you know. I went out and did the same thing. Really? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I wasn't, I didn't have an experience. I didn't have the, the point that I really needed to, to hit. I didn't hit bottom. So I went and continued on. I went to a lo- uh, rehab in Los Angeles called the Dream Center, mm-hmm. and I did that for a year. And I, I'm not trying here to bash anybody, but Faith they based. didn't really help. Yeah, it's a Christian, Christian rehab, you know. That didn't help, you know. I went through the secular ones. I went through the military ones. I went through the the faith-based ones, nothing really helped until I came to Total Freedom. And when I went to Total Freedom, um, it was another opportunity for me to to get set free, to get really set free. And it was something that needed to take place. I needed to have a deliverance take place. I needed to have an experience with Jesus. More than just, uh, you know, I give my heart to God. So more than just, I'm trying, I'm, I don't want to try to put words in your mouth. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I feel like you're saying is that um, rather than just making a statement and really trying to mean it, that something outside of you needed to happen 
something oh, yeah. bigger than you and your own will needed to happen. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I, I wouldn't be sitting here right now if I didn't have deliverance. I needed demons to get cast out of me, and that's what took place. I, really? had, I had demons in me that were making me an, an addict. They were making me do the things I was doing, and I didn't know they were there, and I'd lived my whole life with some of them. And they were inside of my body, in my mind, making me do these things. And when those things left my body, everything changed in my life. Because really? my thought process changed. I mean, when they left, I, I thought like half my brain was gone. Because <laughs> I didn't hear those voices in my head. I didn't have those desires to do those things. You know, I think that there may be people listening right now who've watched movies that have, you know, demonic possession in them or something. And they would wonder, how in the world could you really be possessed by a demon and not actually know it? Like, Because what you're describing is that as a person who went to church and thought you knew God and thought you loved God, um, that you were actually being controlled by the enemy. And it wasn't until you truly surrendered to God that you got full deliverance. And whatever had control of you before had to leave in Jesus' name. That's right. I had to leave in Jesus' name. But a lot of people, you know... We go around this earth and we think that we have control over our thoughts, we have control over our bodies, and we think that, you know, we, we can do whatever we want. You know, but you have, you have to, it, unfortunately, Christians don't want to hear it, and I tell them all the time, but there's a spirit realm. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit realm, it's all around us, and it's real, you know, and people don't want to believe it, but that's what Jesus came to show us, was the authority and the power we have in his name in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. in the world around us. And we have to wake up to that fact as Christians. Because the witches and the warlocks know it and they operate in it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, we put these things in our bodies and we decide to sin, that opens a door. And a spirit can jump in you just <laughs> real easy. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, you know. Like Alka-Seltzer. There it is. It's happening. And then, you know, it's creating stuff. And, you know, addiction, you know, uh, violence, things that take place in our lives. God, God doesn't want those things to take place. And if we're born again, if we have the, if we have the Holy Spirit... We should have control over ourselves. If we don't have control over our thoughts, our actions, then there might be something else there, and we have to take account for that. So it's an interesting point you raise because, uh, you know, the Word of God tells us about the fruit of the Spirit, and fruit is singular there. It's not plural, but it's, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And when there's no self-control, you have to say, well, then where's the Spirit? Because Amen. this is the fruit of the Spirit. That's an interesting point. Uh, Stephanie, what about your story? Because obviously we're going to come back, but, you know, um, you, it sounds like you wrestled for many years to deal with substance abuse and other things going on in your life. But yeah. how did it begin for you? And then tell us a bit about the journey. Um, well, you know, the, the drugs and the alcohol were just byproducts of what was really going on from, you know, childhood. I had traumas. Um, you know, how strongholds take place is like... The enemy takes traumas that happen in your life and makes you believe lies about yourself, lies about God, lies about how this world works, and you become bitter, angry, and hate everything, really. And that's what was going on. Um, I hated myself. I was super insecure. And um, I was actually, I was a goody two-shoes until I was, like, 16. Um, and then I, I drank for the first time and uh, you know my older brothers were, were using um but um not me i was too good for that so then um but i was still miserable and i i was very insecure in high school and um you know i was overweight and i really just um it, that just made it worse you know but um these traumas just made me hate myself and the first drink i took uh it made me someone I wasn't you know it uh gave me confidence or false confidence you know um and I was addicted to not being myself essentially from that point on because I I it was masking you know it was just it was an escape from from me and I couldn't deal with me I couldn't deal with myself so um I pretty much swan dove that's that's what I picture because I just dove right into uh, drugs alcohol everything uh, I could get my hands on essentially because I I actually had I had conviction and I felt guilty you know and I didn't want to feel that because I knew I was running from the Lord mm -hmm. and uh, I had done that um, for years I mean I I did get a DWI when I was 18 um, so that was my opportunity to clean up you know and 
uh, give it another shot. So I went back to school um, for ultrasound. I worked full time as an ultrasound tech, but I was I, um, I was dating a very abusive guy. Uh, I actually was living with him when I was 20, but I had a full-time job as an ultrasound tech, and I was making a lot of money. So in the world's eyes, I was doing okay. I bought my own house, and um, but I had a serious eating disorder. I was drinking every night. I mean, um, I, it was, I was spiritually a mess. And um, anyone with, you don't even need spiritual sight to see that I was, I was really not doing well. I just mm -hmm. was holding it together within, in the area of a career until, um, you know, I lost my job and it was like three, three, I got another job immediately and I lost that one. Like I, my liver and my kidneys were shutting down between the bulimia that I was doing and the, um, the drinking and, and the drugs I was using for years that it's just my body was shutting down and um you know I dated another guy who who cheated on me and was abusing me physically and um I actually right around that time I drove my car into a telephone pole you know severely under the influence on purpose um well you know something in me drove it into the pole um you know I I I was something else took over really mm -hmm. um and you know I I, my eye was falling out of my head. I fractured my eye in three spots. That's why I got, you know, the scar here, which it's really not a bad scar for how bad I look. I think I, I showed actually, you the picture yeah, yeah. at the concert. Um, I forgot, and I can't really see it, but now I can see it. Yeah. Since it's right, literally follows your eyebrow on your yeah, left it's, side. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's parallel. I don't know. <laughs> God did a good job at sparing my face. Um, God be the glory. But uh, after that, I still went out and got worse. I still went out and got worse. You know, I tried AA for like a month or whatever, and I just thought those people were, uh, you know, I don't know. It wasn't for me. So I just went and did what I was doing, but mm -hmm. I the drugs got harder and the guys got worse and the the eating disorder got worse and the self-hatred got worse because you know there's all that shame from your past piled on and then every single thing you do just there's no way out because you're in a snowball of shame i guilt. was just gonna say isn't it like a vicious cycle that you hate yourself for what you just did so to cover the pain you use again right and that creates worse problems it does it does and uh you know I, I finally reached, I, my brother had gone to total freedom and I saw the transformation in him and, you know, I'm, I was spiritually dead and I could see, you know, you told me I was glowing and after his deliverance, I said, Josh, you're, you're glowing like you're pregnant. I'm, I swear, <laughs> I told, I tell you, the I said that. And, um, I remember it as, as graduation is nine month, uh, completion, you know, I said, you know, you give me hope. And my friend Matt was on heroin at the time, but I, w I was actually speaking to myself, you know, the Holy Spirit. Um, just, mm. I don't know. It was just a crazy. But eventually I hit uh, enough rock bottoms, lost enough jobs, um, and I was in the hospital enough times um, that I said, I'm, I'm going to total freedom. I know. I told all my friends at the time. I'm going to be completely different. You guys aren't probably never going to see me again because I, I knew, but they didn't know. I said, I've been running from God my whole life, and mm. I know he's the truth. So, I mean, I remember when I said that, the words that spoke through me, like my body started on fire because it was finally, it was happening. You know, God's word was finally starting to come forth, and it was just like my body was just tingling on fire, and it was just like it's time, you know. I've been running long enough, and um, I'm I'm doing what what I was born to do, which was serve him. So, um, that and that was it. it. And they never saw me again. Nobody ever really said. A lot of people thought I fell off the face of the earth. Uh, some people just call me a Jesus freak now, but it's like, yeah, you guys knew me before. For me to be a Jesus freak now, like I was the opposite. You know, I was serving Satan. You know, my son Zach um, struggled with opiate addiction, and that's part. That's his testimony. He came to faith in Christ when he got set free, and um, you know, that's him right outside the door there. And um, you can see him on the other side. I of the was going to ask him. I remember you talking about. Yeah, him. that's the Zach man. He works here. And, <coughs> oh, that's nice. And um, it, you know, it, it's an amazing story. It's similar to, to yours because. Um, he had gotten involved with a crowd that, that he never grew up with. I mean, the, the crowd he grew up with, the guys he played baseball with in Little League and in high school were his buds. So those are the guys who really were his true friends. 
But when he got into the opiate addiction, all of a sudden these other people started showing up. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking <laughs> at people sitting in cars in our driveway going, who is that? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are they doing at our house right now? And My and, parents but, you definitely know, did that. <laughs> he was into it for maybe a year and a half, two years, really heavy, and was that close to using heroin. I mean, literally on the verge of using heroin. And, um, and God miraculously delivered him. It was a kingdom-bound festival. And, um, and I won't go into the whole story. He's told it before. But at this point, that once he came clean and he told us the whole story, and he told his friends, I've given, you know, he told his acquaintances at that time, I've given my life to Jesus, and I told my parents everything. Like, it was like turning on the light and watching the cockroaches scatter. <laughs> These people never showed up again. Amen. They, they were nowhere to be found. And I think it was the light of Christ exposing them that, that they just didn't want any part of it. They didn't want to be a part of it. They wanted to live in the darkness because the word says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But God has a better plan, and, and Stephanie, I was watching you tear up when you talked about finally saying yes to Jesus. Like, sometimes I wonder as humans, why, what, what would cause us to, to continue to say yes to sin and no to Jesus when it's destroying us? Your body was shutting down. You had like 10% kidney function, you said, and you kept going back to it. And yet Jesus didn't abandon you. It sounds too good to be true, I think. A lot of people... It's hard to believe grace we were talking about, you yeah. know. Uh, it sounds too good to be true, but it is true. And that's why God is amazing, because he's all love. And that shame and that guilt and that condemnation has nothing to do with him. But our human minds can't comprehend that. That's why I, it's just unbelief, you know, pride, rebellion. Everything else in the world, if you want to get something, you're going to have to pay for it. You know, if you want a car, you got to buy it, right? If you want a house, you got to save for it. Um, you can't you can't buy forgiveness. It's free. It's a free gift that comes from Jesus, and it's available only when we turn to Him. And I th I often wonder, like, in our own strength, in our humanness, that we almost believe the same lie that Adam and Eve believed that we could be like God. Like that, I don't need Jesus to save me. I can do it myself. And that's not true. It's in it's in humbling ourselves and saying, Lord, I'm I'm broken. I'm a mess. I can't do anything. And I've I totally need you. That, that causes a blow to our pride. And, and John, you're, like, you're not in your head here, but I think you're tracking with me that our, our pride is what gets in the way. We don't want to have to admit that we can't handle this. <laughs> but when we finally say, Lord Jesus, I'm a mess, I need you, and if, if you're even real God, save me because I can't save myself, Jesus shows up and does something beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So um, both of you guys experienced the same kind of deliverance, a breaking of you know the chains and being filled with the Holy Spirit in a way you had never experienced before? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, and we, we walk, we go through a lot of healings at Total Freedom um, and a lot of spiritual warfare, um, you know, that's that's really where the fight is, you know. Uh, the big thing is you can't fight what you can't see. Well, if people aren't believing and seeing that these things aren't happening, of, of course they're not going to be able to fight it, you know, but it reaches a point where um, you got to stand up and fight. And that's, I mean, that's what we're here to do. We're here to train up warriors um, to, to continue that. So p th there's an awakening that takes place in these people so that they can actually turn and fight for themselves. But the healing from those traumas when you were young usually is where everything's rooted in. Because mm -hmm. the alcohol, the drugs, the porn addiction, whatever, suicide, you know, we got all walks of the streets, um, you know, who have, have all these different issues, but they... It's all rooted in your childhood and these traumas. So we, the healing, the deliverance is, is key. It's, it's key. It's the key. And that's part of the discipleship ministry of total freedom, mm -hmm. not just getting set free, but growing and learning these things and learning to walk with Jesus. That's huge. All right, we've got to take another break. When we come back, we're going to tell you the rest of the story because uh, both John and Stephanie ended up at total freedom today they're husband and wife so there's a there's a whole nother part of the story to tell you Ooh. also we'll talk about the ministry of freedom expressions and uh freedom automotive we'll touch on that real briefly uh, there's more to come here on mbl thanks for being with us we'll be back in a moment our program today brought to you by basada kia all right let's get back to it one final segment here with john and stephanie pastillo talking about the incredible work of god to deliver them from what they believe would have been certain death like i don't think either one they told us earlier believed that they would actually be here unless jesus had met them at the point of need uh because both of them were desperately addicted to drugs and got connected miraculously with the ministry of total freedom and god was able to really deal with them and uh, bring them to faith in christ set them free in jesus name so um 
when did you notice that each other existed on the planet? I'm just curious how that came down. Stephanie's got a big grin on her face. <laughs> what happened? It's this cute guy over there. On the uh, other yeah, I, yeah, I guess I carnally, you know, maybe was, but um, you know, I had I had given the desire because yeah, obviously men and um, the attention from men was something that I was using to fill that void, just like drugs and alcohol. You know, right. I needed that for security, and um, I had been through some healings um, regarding that matter, and I finally was like, "Listen, I I don't want I don't want anyone but you, Jesus." And um, you know, I had <laughs> you know I had I guess eyes for him in the program, but um, we couldn't talk to each other, you know. And eventually, my eyes were diverted back to the Lord, and I I really released that to him. It hurt. Um, you know, it was like putting Isaac on the altar, gave, gave that up. And, um, eventually he, he brought it back around cause I was ready to just me and Jesus for the rest of my life. You know, uh, I was done with, you know, but, um, he had other plans and a similar thing happened to him really while well, he, he wasn't really looking at me, I guess, like I was looking at him, but. Okay. We, we need to know how this actually came together, but what, what's your take on this whole thing, John? Well, I mean, so the, the Lord was pretty much, you know, telling me like, you know, he just straight up told me, God just kind of has to deal with me pretty abruptly. He just said, that's your wife, you know. And I got it in prayer, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, knock, knock, hey, John, that's your wife? Yeah, I was like. Really? Well, I was like, what? Yeah, he said, this, that's your wife, and you're going to have kids. And uh, I said, okay. And then that very next day, Pastor John, who's the, uh, who's the pastor over there and uh, the facilitator, he started talking to me and said, you know, uh, Stephanie said she's pretty interested in you. <laughs> And that was like really? the, exact, the, the day or the day after. And I was like, that's funny you say that, Pastor, because, you know, God just told me this. And, uh, and then, it, you know, I just. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And then when it was time, I, 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 we sat down and we had, uh, we sat down in the sanctuary, we read, we read some scriptures, and I told her, like, you know, we're going to get married. It's just a matter of time. So oh. we started courting, you know, mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's what we did. We courted for, I don't know, six or seven months, and then we got married. I think it was almost like a year. It was like 11 months. Oh, well, we courted for a while. So how did you feel about this when he told you this? Well... Because getting to know him is one thing, but his first, like, the first thing he tells you is you're going to be my wife. That Was that well, a little much? or? Uh, you know, uh, courting is not dating. You know, courting with intent to marry. So I knew, like, when we um, met in the sanctuary after worship and we did communion together and he said, God gave me these few verses. We read through them. Um, you know, one of them is Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds a house of labor in vain who build it. So we read through that and he pretty much said that. I mean, God's word is God's word. I'm not going to, just like God gave us that he is his name, like, I'm not, I don't have to think about it. All right, let's do it. But obviously I was elated because I give you the desire of my heart, but um, <laughs> yes, <Love it. laughs> you're so, the desire of my heart, John. So you got married in June of 2020 during the middle of COVID, really. I mean, it's the first three months of COVID. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you get married and um, then Thaddeus was born just born early, but um, this month, right? November mm -hmm. 4th. What? November 4th. 4th. He was due January something. Third. Mm -hmm. So two months early. Wow, nine weeks early, I think you said. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And God blessed you with a child. What are your thoughts about that? Because, like, you, both of you were nearly dead a couple of years ago. I mean, think about what God has done. And, and share from your heart briefly, if you don't mind, for somebody who's in the position that you guys were in. Because either today someone's listening who's right now where you were at or loves someone who's in the position you were at and wonders if there's any hope. I just want to give you a second to just speak to those that are listening today to, to say God is big enough. He can do this if you let him. So let me start with John, and then we'll go to Stephanie. But, I mean, what would your word of encouragement be for somebody who feels like there is no hope? It's desperate. It's, we've tried everything, and it's not working. Well, I mean, I, I know about hopelessness. You know, I lived hopelessness. That was the life I lived. And I went through everything. I did everything I could to try to beat this addiction, to try to, you know, just be a normal person like you see out in the world who just is successful and does good in life but I couldn't I couldn't put it together I couldn't do it mm -hmm. and I had a lot of pain you know I had a lot of spiritual pain emotional pain I had a lot of traumas like she said that happened to me when I was young 
and I carried a lot of that, you know, and, you know, but we have to understand Jesus is the God who heals, mm -hmm. you know, he, he is a healer and he wants to heal still. I mean, he healed in the Old Testament, he healed in the New Testament, he's healing still today. You know, God is here, he's with us, mm -hmm. you know, he wants to heal us and I, I was healed, you know, I was healed. I had demons cast out of me when they left, they took the sickness and disease they brought into my body and my back was healed, my wrists were healed, you know, my spine was healed. You know, thing, God wants to heal us, and we have to open our eyes to that. And we have to understand that, you know, you might be sitting there suffering. You might be sitting there addicted. You might be sitting there pissed off. Or you might have a family member who's in that position, and you're upset that they're in that position. But you have to understand that, you know, God is real, and he hears our prayers, and he knows our hearts, and he wants the best for us. But, see, well, our human minds can't really comprehend what the best is. You know, God has something so much better in store for us. You know, he, lo he really loves us. Jesus loves us. I like what you talked about earlier with the unconditional love. Because until I felt God's unconditional love, I didn't know what love was. Mm -hmm. You know, real love is sacrifice. And that's what Jesus did on that cross for us. He, he loves us. He loves us enough to die for our sins and set us free. You know, that's what he did. His first advent, like we're about to celebrate when he came to earth, was to set us free. That baby was born to set us free in that manger. Mm -hmm. There's no other reason. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't come to, you know, show off. He came to die for our sins, to show us the way to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to God except through him. He's the real God. He's the living God. He's the old God of the Old Testament who created the earth. And he's the same God today who sets the captives free, who heals the leopard, you know, who turns the water into wine. That's Jesus. That's our God, and he, he's not fake. He's, he's the real God, and he has all the power. No one else has it, mm -hmm. and we have to understand that. Jesus has the power. If you want to pray, pray to Jesus because he's the one who's got the power. He's the one who's going to answer that prayer, and he will reveal himself. Mm -hmm. He says that in the Word. I will manifest myself to you if you really seek me, and we need to really seek Jesus. This guy's a preacher masquerading as an HVAC specialist. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was powerful. Stephanie, what would you add to that? I mean, word of encouragement for somebody that's just desperate, a mom or dad whose child is in the place you were in, or whatever you want to say from your heart, it's going to let you speak. Um, don't don't stop praying for him, you know. Um, like I said earlier, the prayers of a righteous man or a woman avail as much, right, um, to the parents, um, you know. And in Romans eight twenty eight, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know, that's uh, constantly running through my head, uh, especially when trials come or tribulations. But uh, I would want to say to the person struggling, you know, you're, you're never too far gone, ever. Don't let the devil tell you that you're too far gone because he loves, that's what he uses is that shame and that guilt and that condemnation from everything that you've been doing and everything that you, you may still end up doing. But, um, you know, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, which is his love, you know, his love poured out from his side, you know, from getting whipped. And he did that for you so you could be free from that guilt and that shame because through that blood, all things are new. Your past is washed away. You're forgiven. You just need to believe you're forgiven. It's part of it is believing it. That's one of the biggest part, believing and trusting in his love for you. And that, that, that past is gone, you know, because we constantly need to renew our mind with with. The, that that thought that the blood of jesus has made all things new and it still makes all things new Amen. every second his mercies are new every morning every second just repent you know if you make a little mistake we all a righteous man may fall seven times but you know get back up again you know so we we're all going to make little mistakes but just repent use the blood of jesus you're forgiven you know you're forgiven and you're new every second you walk in the newness of life so that old man can't come back because you know you're new you know, you just got to remind yourself. And that's Amen. part of the process, too, is is reminding yourself of that and walking in that new mentality, not being conformed to the, the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's by the power of the Holy Spirit, constantly reminding you of these things. And the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of Jesus and his love is what really, really transforms you. Because I didn't I wouldn't have changed if the love didn't. If the love didn't penetrate this this heart of stone, I mean, I was a bitter, angry, hate hateful person, and it was really directed towards myself or who I thought I was, but that was all a deception. Everything I thought I was was a lie. It was a lie from the devil. And once the Holy Spirit started enlightening me to these things, 
the more of my old man gets gets crucified, you know, it's just gone. And that's where the, the transformation takes place because I'm nothing like I was. I, everything has changed. Everything. I mean, to my hair, I used to have like long, gangly hair. Like everything is different. To God be the glory. But that's what the love of God does. You just got to let it. Hey Amen. She's a, a preacher masquerading as a new mom. So <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable. What a great story. And um, if you just tuned in, you missed the fact that um, John and Stephanie are the parents of a little guy named Thaddeus James, who's also known as Teddy. He was born at 31 and a half weeks. And even as we're having this conversation, he's in the NICU uh, at Children's Oshai Children's Hospital, which is two blocks from here. We can literally see it out the window. So your little guy is over there, and we're looking forward to meeting him soon. Tell us real quick about Total Freedom, obviously, is the ministry that, that helps you get set free. But Freedom Expressions is where you work, Stephanie. It's custom apparel and printing service mm-hmm. and custom, uh, so also Freedom Automotive. They're like two arms of this ministry, but they're businesses designed to give you guys a, a head start on getting your feet back on the ground. Who wants to... So, somebody explain what what that's about. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's it's just uh, it's another platform for God to move, you know. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of times, people who come to get T-shirts from there, let's say, they they don't really know much about the ministry. So, like, uh, they may talk to us, learn about it, and then um, you know, reach out to someone who actually who needs to go through the program there, you know. Um, but also, it's like with vocational training with the automotive side. Um, you know, it's it's helping people learn a new trade while they're in the process, um, or if if they're on the second part of it. Um, but it's a blessing, you know, and it's it's just advancing God's kingdom through that. You know, um, any funding is goes right back into the ministry, and it just goes full circle because that's how God wants things to move. You know, so right. we can just advance. And I think there's another uh, one a catering starting up. Actually, we have a, a full. Table. Commercial kitchen, I think it's called. Yeah, the, we have a executive chef who's fully trained, awesome cook. He's up from Florida. He came up there from the program in Florida, mm-hmm. and he and uh, he started a ministry slash business called the Table, and where he's going to do some catering and some uh, food service, and I mean, <laughs> and train people in that as well. Yeah, and train people in that as well, and it, the food wow. is amazing. I mean, it's just it's, it's like top a full notch. fledged thing going on out there in Alden. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's all, of, you know, advancing God's kingdom, you know, oh. and, uh, you know, you say it's like I work there, but essentially I, ser- I serve there because, you know, and everything I'm doing, I'm serving the Lord. And that's what we that's right. how we look, view it, you know, is serving God. We're serving God by talking to you right now. We're serving God by going to minister to our child, which is where we're going after this. And uh, we're <laughs> serving God. You know, that's that's a mentality. That's the heart set. You know, yeah. it's worship. It's worshiping God. And right. it's it's thanking him for everything he's done in our lives because what else are we going to do i mean the, our life is god's our life is jesus's because he gave his for our us you know when we, we got set free the mindset the mentality that we both received from the holy spirit from god was more people need this amen more people need this more people need to get set free more people need deliverance more people need healing more people need forgiveness more people need help and discipleship. They need to be picked up. They need to be exhorted. You know, they need a place to go. They need something. Because I mean, me when I got the total freedom, I want to be there. You know, a lot of people they don't they don't want help. They don't want to be there in that state. But that's where they need. Those are the people that God wants. The scumbags, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. down and outs, the drug addicts. You know, Jesus came for the sinners, right? I mean, Jesus came for them. He didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. I just yeah. read that this morning. And, real, I was. I said it to myself yesterday when I was painting. I've been working on painting a room in my house. That verse crossed my mind. How interesting. Those who are Praise well God. have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. That's right. And let's remember that's exactly why Jesus came. We're about. You mentioned we're going to celebrate the Christmas season here. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming for us. Amen. Because we're the ones who needed you. Amen. Um, I want to pray for you guys, and uh, if somebody wants to connect with Total Freedom, I don't know if you know that website, but Freedom Expressions is freedomexpressions.net. Um, do you know the I website for Total Freedom? Total Freedom New York dot org. NY. NY. Total Freedom NY dot org. Yeah. Okay. Total Freedom NY dot org or freedomexpressions.net. You can learn more about what these guys are a part of now. Uh, but Lord, I thank you for John and Stephanie. I thank you for rescuing them. Uh, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he had his grip in each of their lives. But God, you came to set us free, as John was talking about earlier, Lord, and it's by the power that uh, 
the, of your shed blood and, and the power that raised you from the dead that we ourselves can walk in that same victory. Lord, you made that possible by what you accomplished at Calvary. Thank you for coming for us in our brokenness. Thank you for delivering us. And I thank you for the beautiful work that you're doing in John and Stephanie's lives as individuals, as husband and wife, and now as mom and dad. And we pray for Thaddeus James, little Teddy over there, God, that you continue to strengthen that little guy. Thank you for the miracle that he is and, and what he represents, the new life that can always be found in you. So, Lord, our hope, our future is, is rest securely on you, and I just pray that today's conversation would be a great encouragement to someone who's struggling or someone who is at their wit's end because they know someone who's struggling. Lord Jesus, be magnified. Uh, be magnified. This is a message that others need, and I thank you that John and Stephanie have agreed to be your ambassadors to help share that with others, including in today's conversation. So bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, you guys, have a wonderful Christmas. And um, I don't know your parents, I don't know your family, John, but say hello to anybody that you think I might know, <laughs> including the guys over at, uh, at Total Freedom. But um, Stephanie, say hi to your mom and dad for me, if you don't mind. We'll would do. love it. All right, we'll be back with more of NBL here in just a moment. Our program today brought to you by Ryan McKean of McKean Construction.